I know a lot of people are scared about getting into van life because they don't know where they're going to sleep. And people sometimes ask in comments or email me about where do I sleep? What's it like sleeping in Boston on the street? So tonight I'm going to show you. I'm going to find a location in a residential neighborhood. I'll show you what I do, how I find a spot, what I do when I get there. Even before I get there, I go around and black out all of my windows, do some stealth stuff. I'll show you. So I made this little blackout thing that folds up into three. It blocks this window that goes over my sink. Just jam it in like this. It wedges against the fire extinguisher like that. And it just kind of stays in through its own form factor. It blocks out everything. It seals. This does a great job. I have another window in the back that I also black out. So back here in my bathroom area, I have another window here. Let me pull back the curtain, I'll show you. What I do here, I made this little thing that's just, I think it's green guard, the insulation that I coated in Gorilla Tape. One side is red, the one that goes inside. The other side is black tape. I jam it in here in my Ford Transit, literally right behind the little locking mechanism like that. That's all you need to do, that keeps it in place this right here. I need to block off the entire cabin so this can't be seen out the front windows or the driver and passenger side windows. I use a blackout blind, not like a regular curtain. Make sure you get the blackout variety at Walmart or Target or wherever. And I'll show you how it works. Let me come around the other side. So I just have it on a regular curtain right here, shower rod. I make sure it tucks in behind the passenger, behind the driver's seat right there. Last time I did this, I did a Walmart video about this. I forgot to hook this last part right here, which seals this little quadrant right here. Everyone in the comment is just blasting me about it, how they could see the light here. I'll show you this part. So the Ford Transit has a weird shape and I made this little extension and installed a bolt in a factory hole right there. It was very easy, that's a factory hole. I just put a rib nut in it. And I use a little zip tie right here that I make sure I, let's see, can I do this with one hand while also talking to you guys? Here we go. And it goes, snaps on just like that. This seals off this quadrant right here so you can't see it at the front. So I've got all my lights blasting in here. I'm gonna go outside. I've even got the disco ball light going. I'll show you how blacked out it is. I won't edit this video, but it'll all be one run. So you can see I'm not cheating or anything like that. This is the back. Yeah, that back window's totally sealed off. Like I said, that's just green guard with one side coated in black tape. I'll come around the side where my window, where my kitchen area is, the window above it. That's the window above it. There ain't no light leaking out of that. Last but not least, I'll come around the front. So that's what it looks like out the front. Yeah, there is no light leaking out the passenger area because in that Walmart video, I did not do that last snap at the end because I was tired, I guess. Yeah, see with that last snap area, there ain't no light leaking out of that at all. Let me just open it up so I'll show you all the lights are still going. See, all my lights blasting. So to all the people watching that Walmart video, I did not do this last snap up right here. I was lazy. Make sure you do this. Like I said, in the Ford Transit, there's a factory hole right there that you don't even have to drill out. You just put a rib nut in it and put a little bolt in it and you just snap on your blackout blind like that. That seals off everything. I also crawl under my van and make sure my gray water tank is just closed and sealed off. Nothing like leaking out of it, you know? Nothing should be because I haven't like done anything. Normally if I go to a car wash, I might have that open, you know, cause I hose it out and stuff. I just don't want to leave any trace while I'm there, you know? All right, I think we're good to go. Now the juicy part, which is finding where to park. So if you're new to this, just pay attention to the signs. It might mean pulling over and getting out and reading what the signs say. If it says overnight parking permit required, don't park in that area. If it says no overnight parking, don't park in that area. There are plenty of places that don't say that though. Some do have like a garbage collection at 
7 a.m. or something like that. You should pay attention to that. You should move before that. But I know of some neighborhoods in Boston where there's no overnight parking residence permit required. I'm gonna go there. I bet I can find something. All right, let's get moving. Yes, I'm at a big box lot right now, but I'm definitely not parking here. This is the Home Depot in a suburb of Boston. They do have Allied Universal comes through here during the night, so you do not want to park here. Now, I recommend doing this not like last thing in the evening. Go around in the afternoon and find your spot. Do what I'm doing now. I'm only doing this in the evening because I have experience and I'm pretty sure I can find a place. All right, now this neighborhood does not have a residency permit for parking. You can park on this street right here. I don't, I feel like it's a little too exposed to traffic. I don't wanna get run into. I'm gonna go off on some side streets and start exploring. Let's check out this first one right here on the left. All right, so I normally like to park not right on a corner because every time a car comes and idles next to you like to turn on the street you kind of go paranoid and think they're onto you but in this case I'm gonna take the first thing I can get which is right here I'm gonna pull up just a little bit yeah this should be fine I am in front of a house here I'm not afraid of that though the reason is this neighborhood I'm in has a lot of transients like young people who just rent for a couple years and go and no one on the street like knows who each other is or even talks to each other i would not park in front of a house in a suburb at all and um, that's just stupid but if you're in a city the golden area is like these transitional zones between the city center and the suburbs where you get like dense triple decker apartment tenement tenement type places yeah, parking there is safe because no one knows who you are. Everyone just thinks your car is someone else's. What I'm going to do right now is just get out, walk around, scope the street just a little bit, get a feel for the neighborhood. Let's do that. Now, I might not stay here. I might still move because I need to get out and find what the street signs say. I just went to the one in the corner right here. I didn't see anything but a stop sign. But... They don't post the street parking situation on every single, you know, every single light post. You gotta walk around a bit. So I'm gonna walk down the street, see if I can find any more signs that tell you any restrictions about parking on this street. What do we got here? Oh, someone's lost cat, that's sad. But that's not a parking sign. Okay, I see a sign here. I think that's just a tow zone sign, not something specific to the neighborhood. Yeah, that's just a tow zone for this street. This spot would actually be a really good place to park. I would have pulled right into here had I not seen that tow zone sign. It was almost too good to be true, you know? No wonder no one's parked there. I'm still gonna walk to the end of the street. Sometimes they post the parking restriction signs at only one end of a street, not both. Okay, there are some signs posted on this telephone pole at the other end of the street. Let's go take a look at what they say. I don't want to reveal the street name. I want to have some privacy, but can you see? That says street cleaning, second and fourth Tuesday. 8 a.m. to noon, that's fine though. I'll be out of here before 8 a.m. I like to move first thing in the morning. And tomorrow is not a Tuesday, let alone the second or fourth. Thing. I find that hard to keep track of. The whole second, first, third, whatever. But it also says during snow emergency, no parking there. So keep that in mind. There's no snow emergency tonight. I don't see any sign about residency requ requirements or, you know, permits or anything like that. So I think this street is safe. Yep, I'm going to stay here for the evening. I should be fine. Notice how often I trip over my words when I'm talking. You have no idea how common that is when you're like doing YouTube and stuff. I have to do so much editing and retakes. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm gonna get back into the van, get my dinner going. I'll have one last chat with some more pointers for y'all about stealth camping on a city street. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be okay here. My last tips for you are be quiet 
when you're in the van, you know, don't make noise. You don't want to attract attention. That's the thing. People might freak out and call the police. It's always a risk. The street I'm on, though, in front of this house, absolutely reeks of marijuana. So I think there's just stoners in there. I think they're probably more paranoid than I am right now. But a bit of paranoia is a good thing. It keeps you in check. Make no noise. And also try not to move around a lot. It does cause the van to shake. I'm going to have dinner right now. And then I'm going to go to sleep early. Because why not? <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'm tired, folks. This is like a spur of the moment video recording. This is very raw footage right here. If anything happens for the night, during the night, I will wake you up if I get a knock or something. This video ain't over yet. Hopefully it doesn't. I'll talk to you in the morning, no matter what happens. All right. <sighs> Sorry for the crappy light, guys. I'm keeping it dim. It's like two in the morning and there's a car idling next to me for like a half hour now. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm thinking I should take a peek out the window just to see what's going on. All right, let's give that a shot. All right, I'm trying to look in that rear view mirror because he's behind me. But this dude has been idling for like 30 freaking minutes. Yeah, I'm going back to bed. I think the most common interruption you're gonna get in van life is cars that just pull up next to you and idle for a long time for no obvious reason. This has happened a lot, but for now, I'm going back to bed, guys. Let's take a look. Mm, yeah, so aside from that guy idling for in the middle of the night, which happens a lot, I had no problems here. Now I am gonna get moving. I like to move first thing in the morning. Sorry, the light is hurting my eyes. I think that's important too. You know, leaving no trace and just move. Don't camp out in one place for days at a time if you're sleeping in your vehicle. All right, thanks for watching this video. This was just like kind of thrown together at the last minute, but I thought it was something people might want to see. How to stealth camp on a city street. All right, hit that like button below. Subscribe if you want to see more. I live in my vehicle in New England. All right, peace out, everyone.